we have one hell of a special on the build bench. So starting off at the back here, we've got one of our XS4 before peg cases. Uh, first thing that's going to happen to this in the morning is these are going to get chopped off and our Domex uh, carrier cap conversion is going to be put on there. And that then allows us to put our own locking ears, which replaces that silly pin. Uh, that casing is going to get cleaned up to within an inch of its life and then we've got a beautiful um, brand spanking new Dharma grade crown wheel and pinion going in it with a complete set of Timkin bearings. We've got some polished uh, adjuster rings. Now this here is a long nose ATB LSD special centre and we have here Da, 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 which took some finding uh, one of my own adapter plates uh, which is a ground um, converter which allows me to put a long nose center into a short nose casing uh, we've got a brand new uh, genuine uh, courtesy of Dunsford Land Rovers we bought all this stock genuine Land Rover dry flange uh, complete with the nasty tin shield that goes in the bin and we're putting our super flange on it and um, basically that is going to be one hell of a stunning diff so we will show you a quick sort of video of it being built when it's finished it's off to its new owner who is champing at the bit and as i said i've still got one of these what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it on the web shop uh, with a couple of pictures and basically say it's there it will be under the new diff section and if you want it and you want it built in any way combination shape or form you need to come and see me very quickly or ring me because when that's gone i won't have any more and they are cracking bits of kit this is a very special uh, atb i'm going to give you a lot of information in a very short space of time atb automatic torque biasing differential in old money, an LSD, limited slip differential. The difference between an ATB and an LSD, ATB works by using gears. This one uh, has eight gears inside, six small ones, two drive gears. Uh, LSD works with plates. There are advantages and disadvantages of both. In simple terms, plated LSDs are more suited to racing environments and off-road racing and things like that. ATBs can be used for racing, but also are very road friendly because they don't wear like a plated LSD. However, another downside of an ATB is it's packed solid. There's no space inside. So if you chip a gear or break a shaft, highly likely you will blow it to bits because there's nowhere for the bits inside to go and it will mash everything up. And the idea of this is that it's both got gears inside, ATB, and it's got plates inside, which I believe are carbon fiber, and those are tunable to give extra clamping on top. So when this thing actually starts to work, although it's a linear increase in clamping, at the very last minute you get this extra clamping, which, and that is pretty unique in the marketplace. I can't help but now take this apart and have a little peek inside. And it's in bits. But when you look at this, this is only grease on the gears, but this grease has almost started going hard and my OCD just doesn't like the idea of a beautiful expensive diff being built when really this lot needs cleaning up. But that's normally what you would see in an ATB. You'd have, uh, you'd have the, uh, the six gears each side, the two main drive gears, a spring pack in the middle. Um, but on here, you have these extra bits. And the logic of this is as the ATB increases in clamping force, unlike a locker, it never reaches a fully locked up axle. But what this does is when the ATB gears here run out of clamping, this kicks in at the top end. So from a wear point of view, this only really comes into effect when it really needs that extra clamping. Also being carbon fiber, it's incredibly hard wearing. It's gonna last for a very long time. Um, and it doesn't need special oils either. Uh, we have one more of these in stock. That's it then. Um, a lot of people have said to me, well, what happens if it goes wrong? Well, believe you me, the amount of times you can repair an ATB is incredibly rare because that is jammed fact full of gears and cogs and bits. And if anything gets in there and blows it up, that lot nearly always goes in the skip. So diffs like ATBs are very rarely repairable. Um, so there you go. I'm going to clean this lot up and put it all back together 
and then get on with the build. What a fabulous bit of kit. But David Ashcroft has actually said he has thought about this because as an ATB, there's nothing else quite like it out in the market. And for racers or people that really want something with massive traction, more than your normal LSD or ATB, but don't want a locker and want the constant, if you like, linear clamping that an ATB gives, he has thought he may go into production. I reckon they'd be between 450, 500 pounds. And if you think this is something that you might be interested in, then let me know in the comments because the more people that say they'll be interested, the more that Dave might actually go into production because the hard work's done. And my mate Daryl has been racing uh, with Mousetrap for the best part of last year and he absolutely loves it. He says this thing clamps like you wouldn't believe. So it's nice big bath time for this little lot. Sort of halfway there, put the uh, special plates on the end now. And time to close up side one. To the side, nearly done. Get the drive plates on now. Forget this is the special, but any of the ATBs, this whole unit here is a billet. And inside here are the gears. And this metal is incredibly hard. We tried to tablock convert it and it just blew the cutters apart because it's such tough steel. So that's a no-no. So we have been looking over a period of years as to how to actually keep the crown wheel bolts tight onto the crown wheel. It is a problem with ATBs that whatever you do, these crown, the crown wheel bolts will come loose against the crown wheel. And it's a matter of improving what you do to the, to the best of our ability. So to start off with, um, you know, we've, we've seen ATBs come in with these. This is a standard Land Rover bolt. I don't even think it's a grade 8.8. .8. It's really old school. And that has a, a nice hardened washer. Um, that will either undo, and when it undoes, and it's sort of hanging out here, as it undoes itself it will work like a lathe tool on the inside of the casing and destroy it either that or it will break off and even though this isn't an 8.8 .8, you break that bit off into a thread of a crown wheel and it's an absolute sod to get it out times 10 holes maybe so what a lot of people use is um, the ftc 5150 heavy duty land rover bolt that i think they used on the wolves and the reason they use this one is because it's got a nice big flanged head and it's got serrations on it and the idea of this is that when you wind it on there the serrations actually bite in and hold it in place so there's no washer used the the the, the serrations are what holds it in place the problem with this it's a 12.9 grade, um, so it doesn't stretch. It's quite brittle and it will actually break. And we see ATBs come in where someone's broken all 10 of these in bits. And now you've got a 10.9 grade bit of stub sticking in your crown wheel to try and get out. So we have used these in the past, but they're still not a great solution. The other solution we see are people, uh, they'll use an Allen bolt. Um, sometimes they'll use the Allen bolt with the hardened washer. The problem with the Allen bolt is if you look at it, it's got a very small surface area on the head. So there's very little surface area actually biting into this. Um, so again, what we've done in the past is we've tried using Allen bolts and we tried using something called a Nordlock washer. Now the Nordlock washer is quite unusual. It has serrations on both sides and a cam in the middle. And as you tighten it up, both these serrations bite into the bolt and to the uh, diff that you're winding it into and then the cam actually locks as it goes in. They are absolute sods to undo and they normally keep things tight. But even when you put one of those on here, the problem is you, you're, you're only using a small surface area. You're not covering the whole bolt. So we actually have ended up using a combination of this which is a 10.9 grade unplated hex head bolt. The reason it's unplated is a lot of people don't realize that zinc plating, uh, the silver that you get on them, actually brittleizes the bolt and makes it more prone to shearing. So we use black bolts. And we also use an even more expensive uh, Nordlock. This is a 3 8 NLX. And the NLX, you probably can't see it here, but it's actually curved like a saucer. So not only do you get the serrations on both sides and the cam locking system in the middle, it's actually curved so it's sprung. So when you bolt this down, it's actually sprung loaded as well. Uh, these are not cheap, and funnily enough, neither are those. But the combination of those, we think, is the strongest way of clamping an ATB to a crown wheel and pinion. So now we're going to build it. 
in case you were wondering if we were going to use the case you saw earlier the answer is no we are using the case which had a bit of a clean up uh, the collets are out they're going back in the uh, head bearings out and the shims out we're going to reset that and check it all and the casing has now had a damn good clean and ready to start putting the pinion in and we've chopped off the silly pins and we've domex the carrier caps the collets are cleaned and ready to go back in the casing well, considerable time later, the collets are all in, the pinions in with the new head bearing, the Foster bronze pads in. Now, in the past, uh, Ashcroft only used to make an ATB in long nose flavour, and we used to have to use an adapter plate to make it fit a short nose. The only problem with that is that the P38 110 crown wheel, whatever you call it, is quite thin. So we had a few made out of seriously strong metal that actually, uh, is bigger let me show you so here we have a long nose ATB and here we have a uh, standard P38 110 Dana crown wheel as you can see it's quite thin we've got a special adapter plate we had made and we had it made wider normally they only came to where my fingernail would be on that little crack running around there but we had it made extra so that that extra thickness uh, increases the strength of the crown wheel and the pad sits on this so before you all start screaming that's not just a bit of mild steel um, it's a ground uh, laser cut chamfered plate that we had made and that is the last one I've got and it took a hell of a lot of finding uh, we've got our extra long uh, grade 8 uh, special bolts with Nordlocks in there and that is just about now ready to go into the casing we do more and more of these units now. This is pretty much everything we can do to a short nose diff to make it a lot stronger. Uh, peg case, this one's peg case 187. Got a new genuine uh, Land Rover dry flange on the front, courtesy of Dunsfold Land Rovers when we bought all their stock. It's got our super flange, genuine seal, genuine Timkin tail, genuine Timkin head. So that's that side. Let's have a little look at the other. What a beautiful diff. So, running you through it, Domex carrier cap conversions. We've got our own uh, nut and bolt and our own CS80 grade heavy duty locking ears on there. Uh, it's got the ATV LSD center. Beautiful brand new Dana crown wheel and pinion. These always give us a lovely print, absolutely silent really nice blue check pattern which i've now got all over my paws on both sides really nice then we've got the other side again domex carrot cap conversion heavy duty upgraded carrot cap bolts with nord locks heavy duty um crown wheel bolts again with nord locks we've got the pad showing there and then we've got our special plate that we've had made um, giving the extra thickness to the crown wheel which really does make quite a significant difference to stopping that flexing around all in all that is a stunning short nose diff and off to its due owner along with a matching front when we build it bye for now